sick and um and the character was intended to just be a guest star and then it just expanded and expanded because it just worked so beautifully and I was so lucky to be able to be a part of that because as you know it was an incredible cast and an incredible creative team of just brilliant comedy writers and you know August was just uh so interesting and such a you know what I now hear a lot of people call her a young feminist icon and so I'm thrilled that I got to be a part of that and I suppose uh, Shay in terms of most of your roles in Third Rock from the Sun it was centered around Joseph Gordon-Levitt the yes. sort of uh, the, the Tommy character and uh, I suppose uh his boyish sort of ways in terms of him being more of a boy, really, and more of a teenage mm -hmm. boy than an alien as sort of such. And uh, did you, uh, in terms of Joseph, in terms of his humour, did you even know at a young age that you were teens that maybe there was something special about this guy in terms of his acting ability, in terms of that he had? Did you get a sixth sense that this guy was probably destined for greater things when he was older? Well, I don't think you had to have a sixth sense to know that he was a, an extraordinary actor. Um, you know, really inventive and intuitive and um, wise beyond his years, but also such an interesting, intellectual, insightful young man, um, a really special artist and a very special person. I think everybody knew it and I certainly did, yes. Yeah. And I suppose, Shay, at the time you were sort of a young actress and there was probably mm -hmm. icons and role models that you looked up to. Uh, maybe you were doing guest star appearances. I don't know. And some of the guest shows you did, whether uh, John Cleese or William Shatner were in some of the mm -hmm. episodes uh, that you sort of did. But did you always get a sense of excitement coming onto the set of that third rock from the sun? Not only being around with the main cast, some real prominent actors, but the thought that some legendary actors might appear or roll in uh, some day in terms of like Sidney Crawford as well appear in a few episodes where you always on the mm -hmm. tender hook each week to say who's going to be starring beside me who am I going to see today the thing I remember the most about the guest actors was just how generous and and humble and giving they all were I remember when Mark Hamill was on the show and he was, it was like it was his first day as an actor on his first set. He was so joyful, such a really friendly and warm guy. But I think that any set is built on your star. And John Lithgow was such a playful, you know, excited like had such a, a a childlike joy and and excitement about the work that we did. And so that was always how that set felt. It always felt like play. It always felt like everybody was there to just explore and have fun and have a great time. Now, of course, on any set, everyone has to work so hard. Everyone, the crew, the cast, the creative team, to to make everything work and they did everyone's doing their best everyone's putting in a hundred percent but the joyfulness of that set is something that i'll never forget and i think all of the the guest actors would come onto the set and find themselves so welcome and so appreciated everything felt so comfortable and Shay, did you almost have uh, two uh, doting mothers in uh, Jane Curtin and Simba Kali in terms of did they look after you in terms of was there a, a bit of a sisterhood going on there in terms of Third Rock from the Sun? Were they keeping their eyes over you and giving you men, men, tips and uh, mentors about the business? And obviously uh, the old oh, yeah. character, Jane Curtin, she just smashed it really. Well, Jane has a daughter who's my age and so she naturally knows how to be a friend and a mentor all you have to do to be mentored by Jane Curtin is sit back and watch her work um Cindy was is such a young woman when we did the show that I really looked to her as an older sister and but of course they all and and the creative team, I mean, you know, Bonnie Turner and Christine Zander both were very 
kind and um, and gave me advice and were helpful to me. And I was so young and um, and, you know, didn't know very much and didn't know what I didn't know. But I'd already been working a long time even then. Um, but everyone on that set, uh, it was, yes, the women always look out for each other. And that I've found to be true in general across the board. Um, you know, Simbi was a really, really vibrant, special woman. And I felt really lucky to be around her and her energy. And Jane Curtin is just such a genius that I feel really honored that I got to watch her work. And I mean, such an incredibly funny woman. Like, I don't know if anybody's ever made me laugh that hard <laughs> in my life, just in conversations on set. Yeah. And I mentioned being a young teenage girl and a young uh, female actress as well. And you're coming on set and you're probably watching the scenes that you're not involved in, in terms of mm -hmm. shooting and trying to learn. Them. And you see uh, French uh, Stewart and you see the quirkiness and the daftness. And you're almost probably thinking to yourself, is this real? Is this how can someone uh, put on this sort of dare I say weirdness or the mm -hmm. sort of stuff like that and probably then when they say right that's a wrap cut go back to normality and sound like mm -hmm. an average day-to-day -day person and just be able to like a switch of a button on off on off mm -hmm. to be able to mm -hmm. to do that uh, and in terms of that improv sort of acting in terms of just to go to a completely different place that none of the rest of the cast probably as far from John Lico who could go to those really loud moments the, the mm -hmm. quirkiness of French George uh, it was a joy to behold well French is a joy to be around he is a truly like loving warm light of a person so from the very beginning I just adored him he has he is just a, a beautiful, warm sunshine of a man. And I felt really lucky just to be his friend and, and get to spend time with him. And so to see, you know, he's a wonderful actor and to watch him create such a specific character that has, of course, nothing to do with him, but has to be somewhere inside of him and, and he connected to it and, and brought something really really iconic and really special to the world. I mean, that's a that's a character I think people really got a lot of joy out of. And um and French is, you know, just a I just a wonderful human being through and through. Yeah. And Shay, how did you see the journey of August? And were you happy the way it progressed and tore rock from the sun? Had you any sort of ideas that you pitched to the, the Bonnie and the other producers, directors and ways you could take that character? Was there ever any sense that she might fumble on Tommy's sort of secret or were there any sort of talks that, that uh, she might be in the loop or something like that might happen? Or was there any Oh, I really... You know, now I wish that I had, I wish that I had thought about that, but I was so young and I was so grateful just to be there. Um, no, I mean, August had, was not intended to be a regular character. It, that happened very organically because the, you know, Tommy and August worked so beautifully together that it expanded, but no, it really just, it had its own life and it sort of naturally came to a conclusion um, which they had discussed with me ahead of time, like they're gonna break up and we think this is gonna happen and we think that's gonna happen. But you know, one of the amazing things about that creative team is that they, things did change on the fly a lot. So I don't know that there was ever a real clear, like, okay, this is what's gonna happen and then this is gonna end here. And then it, it just sort of happened naturally. And they went with how things moved from week to week and how they felt. and. I just felt lucky every day that I got to be on that set. And um, and I'm happy that I was a part of that show and got to work with those people. And, and you know, looking back, that's really all that I can think about. Yeah. And obviously, it, uh, season two, season three, it became a, a sensation in terms of the mm -hmm. all across the States and the cable TV. And when did you start to, to realize that, wow, I'm on to, I'm a part of something big here. I'm a part of something that has gone national and even in some cases uh, international. And uh, 
was for a time, did you get an awful lot of recognition outside of family, close friends, neighbor, uh, outside your local neighborhood in terms of being involved in a hit sort of TV show? And was that quite startling at first as a teenage girl to sort of come to grips with? Well, I was I had been acting for years before then, and I had done a couple of of um not as high profile as Third Rock, but a couple of high profile uh, TV shows. So I'd experienced being recognized and having people approach me in public, which is an odd experience when somebody that you don't know thinks that they do know you. Or, you know, when I was, you know, a young teenager and having adults come up and like grab me and hug me in the grocery store and having no idea what was going on. Um, it was a strange experience because I was in high school, you know, throughout um, shooting Third Rock. And the it was strange because I was not going to like a performing arts high school. I was in a very normal school and with normal friends. And, and I definitely was um, set apart a little bit from my community because of it. And yeah, it's a fame back then is not what it is now with social media and paparazzi and everything. It was more low key, but it was still jarring. And there were some perks, certainly. I could get tickets to any concert and I could get reservations at any restaurant. But in terms of my social community, it was awkward. And it was awkward for my teenage friends when we'd be out and people would come up and recognize me and want to talk to me and take pictures and whatever. The funniest thing that would happen is that I would go out sometimes and someone would say, wow, you really look like that girl from Third Rock from the Sun, but she's really hot. I would go, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> and I suppose, Shay, we talk about friendships then. I suppose for a while, obviously, you probably, when your time came to close in Third Rock from the Sun, I imagine you kept some of those friendships for mm -hmm. a few years. Uh, and obviously, as the business goes, people go their own ways and people do their projects and those sort of lesson over the time. But who was the one person that you kept that uh, bond or friendship with for the most, whether it's still intact to this day, but it kept running for a long time? Was there anyone in particular that after your time and Third Rock from the Sun that you kept in touch for a good bit afterwards? I stayed in touch with Joe for a long time. And we, the, I haven't seen him in, uh, I guess, a couple of years. We ran into each other not that long ago with our kids. Um, I stay in touch with French. Um, he's just the most warm, loving person in the world. Um, and when I see people, when I run into them, it's like no time has passed. Uh, but yeah, mostly we stay in touch on social media at this point. Okay. Okay. Sadly, they're not all sitting around to have breakfast this morning, although I wish they were. Yeah, it's the way of the world. And um, yeah. when we talk about cult classic comedy series and series that can be watched by generations that maybe are they're born in the 2000th century, maybe they're born mm. in 2005, 2006, that weren't alive when Third Rock from the Sun was even dare I say not even created but even by the time it finished there weren't alive that all these generations of new audience can watch it again for the first time a new sort of a fan basis when we think about cult classic is that what comes to mind as people will sit down they'll resonate and people will watch the series all over again from scratch and fall in love fall in love with it again even 20 years later is that why a tv series can stand the test of time is that when it for you when it becomes a cult classic? I don't even know if I would consider Third Rock a cult classic because it was so huge when it was on. I think that what makes that show stand the test of time is that there were geniuses involved. The, the creative team of that show are some of the best comedic writers ever. And the directors and the actors involved. I mean, everybody knows that here you've got some of the, you know, Joe is one of the greatest actors of his generation. John Lithgow is well deservedly regarded as one of the best actors alive. And it's because, you know, that was a little bit of a magic bullet that they put together there. 
And um, I think that people who loved the show then and who love it now are responding to real artistry that was created. Okay. And Shay asked her before we came on air, you mentioned about some projects that you have mm -hmm. in the pipeline at the moment that our audience and our listeners here in Ireland might get to see you sometime in the near future and our TV screens or our films uh, or our cinema screens in the upcoming year. You might enlighten us, uh, whatever you can tell us in terms of disclosure. Yeah, I'd love to. I um, I actually made a film, uh, wrote and directed a short film of my own uh, called Lash Larson's Last Audition. It's about a down on her luck actress who has one last chance to make it big. And so I'm in the post-production process and hopefully that'll be out later this year. And I'll announce it on, you can find me on Instagram and, and uh, I'll announce new projects there. Uh, I also have been a working musician for many years. I started doing that about 20 years ago and uh, put out some records. I have some, you know, music that's been in films and um, and I have some new music that'll be released uh, in the next uh, probably six months. So anyone who wants to find me on my social media, I'll announce stuff out there and you can find some of my music and stuff on YouTube and Spotify, et cetera. Okay. And Shay Astor, uh, you mentioned as well that you, uh, although you haven't been to Ireland, you have some Irish blood in you. I certainly do. My name, Shay, um, is a family name. My maternal grandmother is from a Cook family. So I don't think you have to go back too far to know where that comes from. And um, 